Now that we have written our tests for creating a new user, let's go ahead and start to build them up. And in uh, this first video, what we're going to do is just set up a, a simple form so that we can pass this first test right here. And so what we need to do is, is two things. Uh, first, we need to um, go into the controller, so app, controllers, user controller, and we need to create a new action, just like we did earlier for the index. Now our action is new. And just like in the index, we need to create a variable to pass to our view. We're going to create an, a variable as well. Um, and this might, might seem a little strange. But we, need, uh, we, we will need a, an object of type user. So we're just going to create one that's empty. We'll just create a new user object. And that's all we're going to do because once we have that object, then we can uh, do things with it. So let's save this and edit our view. So since this is the new, so it would be new.html.erb. And what we're going to do is we want to create a form. And so we want something to look like form method equals something action equals something and then here's where the nice input methods go and I suppose we would also want to you know submit you know, input type equals submit we want uh, something that looks like that and we could build up a, a form like this but Rails gives us a, a lot of help because the, the truth is, which method should we be using and what action should be using is, um, is a little bit tricky um, to, to remember. And so what Rails does is it gives us a, a method that we can use that will properly construct the form um, and it will fill out method and action properly. So uh, we will give our pseudo element here and it is form for this user object that we created in the controller. And from that user object, it's going to know that the method needs to be post because we've created this uh, user, but it hasn't been saved in the database. And so we're trying to, it knows that this user object needs to be saved. Um, and so it does that and then the action right here it knows where to, to what the right URL is to pass to get it to point to the, to the right location the slash users URL so this is going to be a block and it's going to give us a an object um, that I'll call F for form and this right here, this block, this do end block, is where we'll put all the information that we want for, for these input methods here. And not only does Rails provide us this form for method that will point to the right location, but it provides us methods that we can use to create the, these input fields properly for, for this form. So let's go ahead and start off by creating another pseudo element and we're going to use this F object right here that we're given a handle to and we're going to create a password field and that password field is going to correspond to the password attribute in our user so we're going to give it the symbol password to tell it, hey, we want uh, this field that you're creating, this input field, to to have things like I, you know, ID equals something, um, name equals something, and these values for ID and name get set up so that when Rails receives that value, it's going to stick it in the password field of this user object. And so 
we can uh, do that. And that is technically all we need to do in order to be able to create that form. So let me delete this um, template right here. Save this and go ahead and start our web server so that we can go to our web page when that server gets started and go to the URL. So it's slash users slash new and we get that password box. Let me show you the HTML that's generated here and you can see that it's got our form field it's got the proper action URL and it's got the proper method as, as post right here and then we've got our password field right here and notice what the ID is it's user underscore password and this ID is constructed because if, if we consider our user uh, object that we're con constructing this form with, this user object is of user class. And so this right here is created because of the class of, of this object right here, user underscore. And then the, or user. And the password is constructed because we told it that it was from the the password attribute and so it combines that ID to user underscore password the class and the attribute for that so now when we would try to submit this it would see user underscore password and say oh we want to create a new user object and we want to stick it in this password attribute and that's how Rails knows to uh, associate these properly. So at this point, we do have a form that is a type password that has our, our user password. Uh, let's go ahead and um, edit our tests and notice that we have the field user underscore password. When we created that I said you had to trust me that this was the right field. Maybe I should have left that as a blank until we figured out how jo uh, how Rails put that in there. But now you can see why this is the right field because the user password is automatically generated by our form. So if we go ahead now and run our test we should hopefully see that this test passes because we have the right password field. And so uh, there are five failures and I didn't show you this before but if you paid really careful attention last time you would notice that w there were six failures. Our first failure is our next expect not to change and so this test has passed uh, and so now we have our template that we can fill out to get everything to to work the the way we want and we'll do that in the next episode